Howdy, this is Butch. You can read my blog, PoseidonAwoke.wordpress.com, or follow me on Gab, at Butch. Today I'm going to talk about the root conflict between the left and the right. The root of the conflict has to do with man's domestication of man. Man domesticates every species that it comes in contact with, which can be of use to man. And that includes himself. The domestication of any species of plant or animal is not a short-term process. It takes years, generations. The apple that you see in the grocery store didn't start that way. It started as a small, bitter crab apple and was then selectively bred for traits which humans find desirable. Similarly, every human being around you is the result of selection pressures. We call this gene culture coevolution theory, the idea that the culture selects for certain winners and losers, selects for certain genes, and then those genes create uh, genotypes and of people that react to the environment in certain ways who create a new type of culture, which then has a, an effect on the genes themselves. So there's this feedback loop between the genes uh, themselves and their expression in genotype and between the, uh, the culture that is created by the, uh, the, the people with those genes. You can view various organizations, various empires, kingdoms throughout history as various strategies for the process of man's domestication of man. And this is the root of the dichotomy. Those who are doing the selecting, those who are doing the domesticating, versus those who are being domesticated. The right can be viewed as those who choose to implement institutions and systems which select for certain genes within the population. And the left is the aggregation of all those who hold the genes which are being selected against. The right are the strong, the left are the weak. The right are the bold, the left are the meek. The right has power, but the left has numbers. It reminds me of that old hippie Doors song where Jim Morrison sings, they got the guns, but we got the numbers. That's the root of the conflict, the domesticators and the domesticated. The right wants to select for genes which make civilization possible. The left just want their genes to be selected. The right is building towards the long-term good of the race and of the species. The left is simply trying to survive. So that's the root of the conflict in a nutshell. And that's the root cause. Man's domestication of man. The selection of certain sets of genes which code for civilization. The right accomplishes this selection process through a number of institutions. For example, monogamy and marriage. If reproduction can be limited to those who are monogamous and married, then that can be used as a filter Requiring each individual to pay for his own reproduction is also a filter. The absolute nuclear family is a type of filter. It prevents those who would have to rely on help from other family members in order to subsidize their reproduction. It prevents those people from reproducing. Thus, we see selection occurring at an individual level rather than at a family level. Once you start viewing institutions as filtering mechanisms to select for certain genes, certain traits, then traditional institutions such as monogamy and marriage start to make a lot of sense. The strategy of the left also starts to make a lot more sense. Their strategy is to lie and use their superior numbers. This is why the left attacks family values, why it attacks marriage. It is attempting to tear down the institutions which filter their genes out of the gene pool. This also explains a logical problem that we see with people on the right. Many on the right point out very correctly how the left doesn't actually believe anything that it says. How the left advocates for tolerance, say for uh, homosexuals, but then at the same time supports Islam. While Islam is blatantly and openly intolerant of homosexuals. Why do we see feminists complaining about rape culture in America and then ignoring 1,400 white girls getting raped in Rotherham or molested in Cologne? Why do these feminist women ignore children being raped by migrants? The reason is simple. The strategy of the left is to use their superior numbers. 
They have to keep their coalition intact at all times. They cannot allow the coalition to be wedged, to be driven apart and broken into pieces. It's only by using their superior numbers that they are able to have influence over the right and to stop the institutions of, of the right from selecting against them. Once you understand that their entire strategy is about making sure that their genes are uh, able to reproduce in the face of these selection mechanisms, then their hypocrisies begin to make a lot more sense. There was recently a gay pride parade in Sweden where the marchers were going to uh, march through the Islamic ghettos in, in Sweden, but they were denounced as racist. The reason why the left denounced the gays as uh, racist in this particular incident is because they wanted to make sure that their coalition wasn't broken. They need all the members of their coalition to work together. So they denounced the march in order to prevent a wedge from two competing factions of the leftist coalition from coming into a confrontation with one another. This is the reason why feminists won't say anything about Islamic rape of girls in uh, Europe. This is the reason why feminists won't point out uh, rapes of white women by Africans in America. It has nothing to do with idealism. All of their words that come out of their mouths, all the ideas that they say that they believe in, such as tolerance and uh, free speech, etc. They don't believe in any of these. These are all merely opportunisms. These are merely ways in which they can influence uh, people around them in order to destroy the institutions which are selecting against their genes. Why is it that the left advocates for democracy? Because they can use the industrialized propaganda machinery and their superior numbers to win in elections. This is why it's in the right's interest to end universal suffrage. Because we have fewer numbers, we can't win elections, but our ideas are the ones that are going to implement the upward development of the species. The left is never going to get us to Mars. The left is never going to create a future. All the left is going to do is to create dysgenia, which is going to devolve our civilization. When the left talks about oppression, what they're really talking about is their genes being selected against. They are, in essence, advocating for a return to the mating patterns of humans in the wild. So that's the root of the conflict between the left and the right. It is the conflict between the domesticators and the domesticated. It is the conflict uh, between the savages among us fighting against man's domestication of man and man's attempt to upwardly develop the species. The left strategy is to use their superior numbers and lies in order to break down the filtering mechanisms created by the right. And this explains the recurring hypocrisy of the left, how it is that feminists can decry rape culture in colleges on one hand and then ignore 1,400 rapes in Rotherham on the other, how it is that gays can march in the streets fighting for the acceptance and tolerance of Islam in the West. It doesn't matter what they say. What they're doing is serving their own intuited genetic self-interest. And in exactly the same way, the right is serving its intuited genetic self-interest. Viewed in this way, the left is a yearning for a return to man's savage animal past, while the yearning impetus of the right is to launch himself into the heavens, to be closer to God.